Hi there. Now, you're quite often asked to prove the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic progression or an arithmetic sequence. And that is the purpose of this video, showing you how we go about setting this out and proving the sum of the first n terms. In fact, I'll show you two formulas that we can use. So let's just go back, remind ourselves what an arithmetic progression is. We take the first term, which is a, and then to that first term, we add a value, often called the common difference, and we denote it by d. So we're going to get for the second term, a plus d. And to the second term, we add d again. And so we get for the third term, a plus 2d. Add d again, fourth term becomes a plus 3d. So you can see for any term, we end up with a plus 1 less than that term times d. So for the nth term, it would be a plus n minus 1d. And the n minus 1th term, the one before this, would be a plus n minus 2d. So I'm hoping you've got that idea. So how do we go about working out what the sum of all of these n terms would be? Well, we call it Sn. So we just push it over here, Sn, the sum of the first n terms. And in other words, then, we're just adding these terms up. So we just write them out again. But I'd encourage you to leave a little bit of space here rather than just writing a and then plus a plus d. Let's just move it across a little. So we'll put it, say, about here. And we'll have the next term, the second term, a plus d. And then we're going to add this term, a plus 2d, the third term. And I'm going to, again, leave a bit of space and put a plus 2d here. And so it's going to be plus and so on. And then as we come up here, OK, we'll just put plus, a few more dots there, I think, plus, and then we've got a plus n minus 2d for this one, and then plus the nth term, which will be a plus n minus 1d. And what I'd like to do is we'll just put these in brackets to separate the terms, OK? Just make it a little clearer, I hope. OK, so do that. Now, what I'm going to do next might seem a bit strange, OK? But what I'm going to do is reverse the terms around. It's still going to be the same total, so we're just going to call it Sn again. But we're going to start with this term. So we'll just write that in as a plus n minus 1d. All right. And then we'll write this one in, plus, And then we've got a plus n minus 2 multiplied by d. And the one before this, OK, would be a plus n minus 3d. And we'll put plus and so on. And then for these last two terms, we'll be on these last two terms, OK? So we would have underneath this one a plus d. And then under this term, we'd have the first term plus a. Let's bracket these off again because it's hard to read. So we'll just bracket off all of those terms there. So I hope you can see that part, OK? Now, here's the interesting bit. We'll call this equation 1, and we'll call this equation 2. And what we do is we add these two equations together, 1 plus 2. So what we end up with is Sn plus another Sn. So that's clearly going to be two Sn's. And it's going to equal. Now, when we look at adding these two terms up, we've got a plus another a, so that's going to be 2a. And then we've got plus n minus 1d. So we'll just put that in, plus n minus 1d. 
Now, what happens when we add these two together? In fact, just before I do that, what I'll do is I'll put that in brackets just to separate it off, OK? So we're going to add these two terms together next. And what happens? We get a plus a, 2a again. Now, if we expand this bracket here, we get nd minus 2d. Well, minus 2d plus this d is minus 1d. So we end up with nd minus 1d. That's the same as this, nd minus 1d when you expand it. So we get exactly the same, plus n minus 1d. Now maybe you can start to see what might happen now when we add these two together. We get a plus a, 2a again. And if we expand this bracket, we got nd minus 3d. And we add 2d to it, so we end up with nd minus 1d. In other words, when factorized, n minus 1 times d again. And this is going to carry on for every term that we pair up, OK? And that's the reason why we reverse the terms. So we create this one common summation, OK? So this is going to be in all the terms we're going to get this. So let's just say plus and so on all the way down. When we add these two together, we get our 2a plus, and then you'll notice if you work that out, you get m minus 1d. And for the last one here, a and a again is 2a plus, easy to see in this one, n minus 1d. So let's just put some brackets around that to create those terms. And so what we've got here is n of these brackets. So when it comes to summing these, we've therefore got 2sn equals n lots of 2a. Now I'm going to put this in square brackets now, OK? Do away with those red brackets there. 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And all I've got to do now is if I divide both sides by 2, I therefore have the sum of the first n terms equals the number of terms n divided by 2, and that's all multiplied by twice the first term, 2a, in other words, plus the number of terms n minus 1 times the common difference d. And there is one particular version for the sum of the first n terms. Now there is another formula that we can use, and I'll show you how we can derive that. It's very easy. If we take the formula we've got here for Sn, the sum of the first n terms then, we can see it's n over 2. But instead of writing 2a, what I'm going to do is just write a plus another a. There's our 2a, and then we've got plus n minus 1 times d, the common difference there. Now, when we look at a plus n minus 1 times d, what I notice is that this is up here. It's the last term, the nth term in other words, of our arithmetic progression or arithmetic sequence. So I can change this to, therefore, the sum of the first n terms equals n over 2. We'll put our square bracket again here. And then we've got a plus, and instead of a plus n minus 1d, I'm just going to write that as being our last term. Just write it as l. Let's just say where l is the last term. OK, the last term. Or you could say it is the nth term. OK, let's just squeeze that in there, the nth term. So what we've got here then is two formulas, which uh, I would encourage you to learn. You generally find them in your formula book. 
but uh, there they are anyway okay and as you can see the proofs aren't that difficult but uh, it's just setting them out give yourself plenty of room when you're trying to prove this leave these spaces at this end okay so that your terms can line up all right okay so there we go that brings us now to the end of this particular proof